It's another episode of Wearable Today. We're gonna today we're gonna be t- uh, episode well today is episode eighty C eight zero five E two. We're gonna talk about wearables in the classroom. Yes, it's already August, and you're already looking at you know kids pushing them back to school. It's time for back to school. Get them out of the house. You know, we've, and of course football's coming up too. So uh, we've got that. We're going to be talking about the Ochsner Health System. Uh, we're going to be talking about Needy Singh uh, put together her top three mistakes. And, of course, Apple Watch News upon Apple Watch News upon Apple Watch News and a whole bunch more. Once again, this is episode number 80, C805E2 of Wearable Today. Hey, everybody. Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine Put Magazine. Uh, and geek and, wow I started perfect hey everybody flawless. Jeff is flawless I'm I'm Lucy flawless a warrior prin- princess anyway uh, <laughs> welcome to wearable today the show where we talk about wearables and what you're wearing and how you're wearing it um, once again my name is Jeffrey Powers from geekazine think magazine putting the geek I said it right this time yay me and of course as always my cohort in crime, my partner in partners in, in wearables and all that other good stuff, Mr. Luke Wallace. You got 34 seconds. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You got 34 uh, seconds before you're knocked out, just so you know. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Luke Wallace here. Uh, I got Birdie over the shoulder hanging out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Luke Luca. Uh, it's, that's... Luke and put in a Luca, uh, L U K E L U C A. Um, yeah, you can find me on Google Plus at google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. You got six seconds left. Uh, never mind. Okay. So uh, you, you, you didn't get knocked out. Good for you. No uh, UFC Thanks. fight championships for you. So let's, you're, well, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into the show we call Big News Little Long. And of course, everything's found over at wearabletoday.com. Go over to wearabletoday.com for all your news here. Start it out, Luke. So, first up, do you have an idea for a wearable in the healthcare industry? No. Oh. Well, maybe somebody out there does. And if they do, you could actually win $1,000 if you're selected by Oshner Health Systems as one of the top 10 ideas for new healthcare wearables. So winners from this competition, or from this first 10 selection, will go on to compete for the top prize, which will be awarded next March at the New Orleans Entrepreneur Week. So this initiative is hoping to spur ideas and businesses uh, to develop better healthcare wearables. You can read the full article about the entire contest and how to enter over at NOLA.com. All right, so the next article, um, they had, as you can see, it's it's completely dead here. So <laughs> oh, no. um, we'll still keep the link on 24 hours. It's not, they, they get, this got some errors on it. So basically, everybody wants to build new apps for your wearables, but there's a few mistakes that you should avoid. And Nidhi Singh had put together three top mistakes, which can be applied to almost any wearable out there. Um, we won't spoil any of the tips, but the one big mistake she does talk about is relying on normal dumb sensors. You thought I was going to say something else. Dumb sensors tracking only steps or general movement when users really want to have the details about what kind of activity they're carrying out. Uh, she's got more tips. You can check over to chromeinfotech.com to find out more. Well, games have been noticeably absent on the wearable platforms. I don't see many Apple Watch users playing things, and the games on Android Wear have been pretty limited this far. Um, Well, one big game has come to Android Wear recently, and that's Ingress. If you're not familiar with the game, it centers around going to real-world locations, attacking portals that your opponents control, while building stronger portals uh, as your own team's defense. So now you can play on your watch by tracking portal locations and attacking and defending. Um, I personally have actually played this game quite a bit um, before it was on wearable. Like it's it's been out for a couple of years on Android. Um, And it's usually pretty hard on your battery because it's using your screen and your GPS and 3D graphics and everything all at once. 
Um, it's interesting if this is like, I'm really curious if this is going to become the preferred method because it'll be a lot more energy efficient on your watch. Yeah. Um, I know it'll be a lot easier for me to play while I'm biking because that's one thing I do is I bike around to go to different portals. Um, you can actually read the full rundown over on androidpolice.com. Another thing that they had that I really liked was the fact that you could, um, they're, they're putting uh, these portals not only in, in areas, but they're actually, uh, they can now tell the height of the area. So you could go to the 15th floor of a building. Oh, really? And and uh, get to a portal, then go up to the 17th floor, get to another portal. Mm. So uh, I was reading on that. There's, that's pretty sweet. And apparently with the wearable, I guess the phone couldn't do that type of uh, calculation, but with the wearable, it can. I don't know. Or maybe they just uh, figured it all out. But, yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how Ingress plays. Um, Moto 360 for the Android, and then, of course, Apple Watch for the iOS because they have... They have uh, the, it is a cross-platform gaming oh, system. Really? So, oh okay. yeah, cool. Yeah, I've uh, I've done many uh, many articles on Ingress there. So, all right, well let's move on because that's what we have to do. Um, I don't know. I have another website that's not loading up here. Well, it's not Wolverine Claws. Let's see if I can load this up because this was really cool. I think everybody's seeing this now. It's not Wolverine Claws. But there's a glove that's made by Morton Gronig. Not Matt Gronig, but Morton Gronig. I'm hearing a lot of like the video audio is coming through. For what? You need to pause the... Oh, wait, no, that's mine. That's, that's you. Sorry. It's my link. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought I was hearing you. Sorry. You've been drinking. Stop drinking. Anyway, um, I wish I could show you this picture. It was loading up just fine before. What's, it just what's loaded up on? for me and started playing the video. So. Yeah. Let's do this. Um... Anyway, so uh, basically, uh, Morton Gronig uh, created this, these gloves. He took some, some sort of uh, automatic knife, and he put them on the fingertips. Um, he calls it the Haparatus glove, um, and the idea is that you can... I'm just going to kill this and see what happens here. He can... Uh, let's reload it. Anyway, uh, he, he basically, so he can use individual fingers on wood and on, here comes, uh, on wood and on other surfaces so they can get a smoother surface. Let's, uh, let's zoom over here before it dies again. And, of course, they got the video that automatically plays. Bad form, guys, bad form. Anyway, so you basically, uh, you, can, you, you use this glove uh, to uh, make nice little shapes and smooth out some corners and, and stuff like that. Um, and it, uh, it's, it's great for that. And it, it's, uh, so they have this video, which is filmed uh, from the Royal College of Art in London. Um, and of course you'll see it in the, in the show notes and it talks all about this glove. Um, I'm, I'd be a little bit concerned about it, especially since he's not wearing a glove on the other hand, um, that it could actually cut you or something like that. But apparently it doesn't do it. it it's, it does pretty well in his initial stuff. It's, it's not really a product that you can get right now. It's all in prototype mode, but think about that. In a few years, you could be just sculpting in like little Wolverine claws. You just sculpt out some, some something uh, that you like wood or, or stone or something like that and go from there. I, I think that's pretty cool. So anyway, that's over on Denzen.com. Uh, once it loads up, you, you'll see it and go from there. So, all right, let's move on. Now that I've stumbled all over that, we're going to go over to Around the Medical Front. Beep, 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 beep. You killed it. It's dead, Jim. <laughs> you killed it. <laughs> killed it. You killed it. Anyway, uh, what data from your wearable is HIPAA protected? That's what some of the people are starting to question. A survey uh, uh, conducted stated that 25% of consumers believed that their personal health data was not secure from wearable standpoint. Does this mean that we'll start to see wearables with encryption uh, and also wearables that become HIPAA compliant? Does it even matter? Because we talked about it last week. You know, the, the uh, physician from Dell basically said, you know, 10,000 steps is, is your goal, but it doesn't mean much to a doctor um, that's trying to you know, figure out what's wrong with you and prescribe the medications. It's great you're doing 10,000 steps, and you can have that data, and uh, the 
it's it's really about what your wearable decides to track you with. I mean, um, all the wearables that I've worked with so far, I have not heard that they've used any of the data coming back to do any type of tracking. But, you know, it's no different than your phone. Eventually, you're going to walk past a Arby's and then all of a sudden get a, you know, an advertisement for an Arby's next time you, you watch a video. It's it's just it's just part of the whole thing. As for your more I, I like heartbeat or uh, or blood pressure or something like that, um, if you are really concerned about people knowing what your blood pressure is, what your heart rate is, then don't use the wearable. Simple as that. And uh, and go from there. Go to your doctor and say, hey, you know, check me out. Don't put a wearable on me. And and uh, and let's keep it all confidential. But if you want your data. If you don't want people to know what your data is, then don't wear a wearable, and uh, and go from there. So, uh, thoughts on this, Luke? Uh, you know, uh, do you do you care about how people know if if they know about your blood pressure or heart rate or anything like that? I mean, I don't know if I would really care if it was just public information, you know, or like I really. I don't see the need for it to be public information. So, um, but you know, maybe it would help me be more accountable if I could share out my, you know, my stats for the month and be like, Hey, my blood pressure's up and I need to be yeah. eating healthier or whatever. So, it, you know, some of that health information I think would be fine. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't want to share all of it. I don't know yeah. if there's much that the wearable could track that I would be real concerned about if someone's like, exactly. they hacked and they found out that the blood pressure across all these, people is too high it's like oh, yeah. okay well great <laughs> it's like yeah. there's not a whole lot you can do with that information well um, we're going to hear eventually someday we're going to hear about taylor swift's blood pressure or something like that some celebrity and that that information so i could i could see that on that aspect but nobody yeah. really cares about my blood pressure except for me and of course jennifer and maybe my family yeah. um and, and a few friends of course but if there's anything that's basically hipaa protected like let's say i have i have afib due to a heart valve problem an irregular heartbeat or whatever the commercial says and uh what i think what their concerns is is if is they find out that you have a blood clot or afib or whatever that thing is and then next thing you know you see zarelto commercials or or the other warfarin commercials and stuff like that uh but that stuff you uh, you talk with your doctor on you don't have it in a wearable so yeah. if that information gets leaked out, it gets leaked out from your doctor, and that is a HIPAA violation right there. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I want there to be privacy around a lot of the information. You know, how many steps I take in a day, uh, not as critical. Um, but, you know, I, I understand, like, people want to have this private information. And, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want, I don't think I'd, I'm not going to try to publish all of my information that I gather from my wearables publicly, so I must want some amount of privacy there. Yeah. So, and like I said, it's, it's going to be all, you know, big celebrities or something like that. And yeah. I suppose just like with a the phone, they could, if they can track your, uh, where you are on your, on your wearable through your phone, then they can, you know, they can come and harass you or, you know, take pictures and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's more like tracking happen. your location that I would be concerned about. I was like, Oh, yeah. the wearable tracked it. Here's where you were and stuff. It's like, uh, that starts to be, um, that's almost more critical than what my, what was my blood pressure while I was, you know, at the park. So exactly, exactly. So, but at the bottom line, uh, are, well, I'll ask you, Luke, are you going to stop wearing wearables because of this or do you, you know, you know, do you see this as a problem? Uh, I don't see it as a problem yet. I wouldn't stop wearing wearables, uh, for this reason. Um, because yeah, I feel like the data is probably being relatively well you know secured um potentially not to hipaa standards but um it's probably pretty well secured and as more people say that they want it to be um stored that safely like google and apple and, and fitbit and yeah everybody else will start tracking uh or will start trying to uh secure this information you know to levels that people are more comfortable with so yeah uh, so so it's like I'm I'm glad for that, but it's not gonna it's not gonna affect how um, I use my wearables today. Yeah, agreed. So, all right. Well, there you go. Um, we don't care, so you shouldn't care. <laughs>
I mean, wait, what? <laughs> You're allowed no. to care if you. You, you can know. care. You can We'd care. love to hear if you care. I'd, yeah. love, I'd love to hear how much you care, and yes. why do you care? So, yeah, tell tell Luke why you care, and I'm just gonna do magic. Watch this. Whoa! Yeah, that's magic. So that's pretty crazy. All right, well, let's speak. Speaking of which, let's move from magic to Apple watches. Magic in itself. As we talk, Apple Watch Watch. <laughs> All right. Hey, do you want to watch and a 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 watch? As the old ad adage goes, why fight it when you can embrace it? That's what the California-based Nico Girard is doing. They launched the line of Pinnacle Watches, where the band allows you to attach an Apple Watch on the other end. Two watches on your wrist. Cool. That's like cool, maybe. Well, the watches are going to get a little bit heavy because you got two watches on your wrist. You know, it's going to be a little bit heavier. And, of course, you, you will have everything that you need from the uh, from California-based Nico Girard and from Apple just by flipping your wrist or something like that. The price is uh, $9,300, and, yes, an Apple Watch is included with that. So that's pretty cool. I don't know, you know, I, I've seen people wear watches on both hand, on both wrists, and I think I'd be fine with that, but I don't know if I could watch, I could have two watches on one wrist, especially with the metal band like this, because um, usually that metal band ends up twisting and turning, getting caught in my arm hairs, and ripping off pieces of flesh, and it's all bloody and disgusting and everything like that, and I just don't like that, so... Um, Luke, uh, would this be something you'd be interested in? Of course not. You don't like Apple Watch. Uh, I, I what if a Moto like Three? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, Ninety-three hundred dollars for two watches, like a little out of my price range. Um, now the gold one is intriguing. Remember the gold watch. How much is the gold Apple Watch? Like that's, fourteen thousand, right? That's t I thought it was ten, but maybe maybe it's fourteen. I I, maybe that. Yeah, the small one I think is ten. Let's let's ask Marco. Um, he bought one. Oh wait, no, he didn't buy one. Never mind. Buy the gold one. But here, the gold <laughs> one costs a hundred and twelve thousand dollars. So very much out of my price range. Um, yeah. Yeah. If I'm gonna spend that much on something, uh, it's probably gonna be a Tesla. Because uh, I could buy a, literally a really nice electric car for the same yep. price as the gold watch. And I yeah. don't think I would buy the a watch over a car, like, if they're the same price. Well, if they already have the Tesla, then, you know, I mean, what do I they spend? They could spend the watch on, or the money on me. I mean, you could send some money. We have, you know, we have ways to donate to this mm -hmm. week, or I'm sorry, wearable today. This week, it's still with this week in Google. Yeah, it is. It's still this week in Google Glass. I'm bringing it back. It's retro, man. <laughs> this thing is retro. It's and crazy. It is but crazy. It's so, but it's true. Yes. Uh, so anyway, you were saying, I'm sorry, Luke. Uh, so I'm saying it's not the idea that I'm against so much, but the price is a little uh, higher than, than I would feel comfortable with. If you could, If you could buy their watch for... 200 bucks, 300 bucks, put in your own Apple Watch because you should be able to just slide in your own Apple Watch. Yeah. Or, you know, if they had a version for the Moto 360 or that just worked on any standard watch band, um, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a nice watch, you know, okay, it might be something that would be appealing to me of like, ooh, because it could look like a normal watch to most people, but then it could have the you know, the, yeah. the, the smartwatch on the, the underside and you could be like, Oh yeah. Okay. Ooh, I felt my, you know, I felt my wrist buzz and then you could turn your watch up and kind of see yeah. what it was. And it's like, yeah, it might be nice. Um, but I really don't think that, yeah, like I'm sure this watch is very nice and I'm sure it's, you know, I'm sure they think it's worth $9,300, but that's just out of my price range. So, yeah. I so how much change. would it be if it wasn't, and didn't have the Apple Watch. That's Would the it question. Five hundred dollars less, or whatever less. Yeah. That's what I wonder. Is it because like <laughs> that's that's a lot. That's a lot of money. That's a lot yeah. of money. Well, once again, if you already have a Tesla and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars, it isn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I just I would see that to be a pretty heavy thing to wear on the wrist. Yeah. I mean, I just. Yeah. Uh, I just reviewed on my iPhone, I just reviewed the Zag 
speakerphone case, which was a speaker, uh, Bluetooth speaker detachable, and it was a battery charger giving you eight extra hours. And it looked like a, uh, oh, I got it right here, it looks like a, uh, um, a Star Trek communicator. But the problem with this thing, this is it right here. The problem with this thing, I'm going to take it apart. This is the uh, bumper case. And then you have this, which this is a really nice Bluetooth speaker. And it's uh, you can set it down, and you, it's got a little microphone on it, so you can use it for conference calls and stuff like that while your phone's on the charger dock or something like that. Um, and then, of course, you can charge up your battery with it. But the only problem is that I was, I was carrying it around with me. My battery was going down to almost nothing, and they didn't have any type of cord that was attached to it that I could actually use it to, to charge up the phone with. So I basically got home. I was down to 10%. I plugged it back in, and I never took this out of case. Now, my point about this is this whole thing is, is kind of bulky um, mm -hmm. on one side. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though it looks cool, it, uh, it, I, I want the thinner thing. And I'll probably take this out to conferences and stuff like that and use it that way. But I don't normally carry an iPhone cord with me. And I, I want it a little bit lighter, so I switched back to my old Olo clip case. So my that, that's my point is, with a watch, it's the same thing. Is you don't want you, you don't want something super heavy on your wrist, especially with those clasps. Those clasps usually pop out, and then it becomes a loose thing on your wrist. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't see people using it unless you're uh, on the red carpet or something like that. And and like I said, there's people that you know have the money to spend on this type of watch and they will spend on it so we'll see uh we'll see what sales do so yeah yeah all right, all right. well we'll move on from there we've got another apple article here and this comes that was over on mashable we went over it in gadget it's uh it actually it was a pretty big buzz today about this uh company um august smart Lo smart locks announced that you can now use apple watch to unlock your doors system app lets you choose the door then simply swipe and tap to unlock the deadbolt. The lock system uses the Bluetooth LE to connect to the lock. So, you know, I've, I've always had problems with Bluetooth, especially if you have, like, in your back pocket or something like that. So you might still have to take your phone out um, and close to the lock for it to actually connect up via Bluetooth and unlock your door. Um, the lock, but, but on the other hand, it's not going through Wi-Fi, which I like. The lock costs $250 and runs on tri two AAA batteries. And then, of course, you'll have a key uh, if the system dies or doesn't work or, or something like that. So um, that's, that's the one big concern I have with these. I'm, I like the fact that it's Bluetooth because that can send a signal saying, this is my Bluetooth device, not Joe Schmo's Bluetooth device. Unlock the door, as opposed to Wi-Fi, which uh, you, could, you could, well, you can hack Bluetooth, but it's easier to hack wi through Wi-Fi from remote. And that's, that's what I like about that. So um, what, are, what are your thoughts on this? Because you just got, you got yourself a, a, a new home automation device yourself, right? Yeah, I may have to try to, uh, uh, I could definitely talk about that now or we can wait till after we get through. Well, we'll wait for that, but let's, okay, let's talk so, just about this one right here. So just thinking about the smart, the smart lock, I think it's very cool. Uh, I agree with your security things of like, you know, Wi-Fi, it just makes it like there's the potential that someone could get to that Wi-Fi address through, you know, anywhere on the Internet. Yeah. Uh, in theory, you know, so like there'd have to be some security there with Bluetooth. At least, you know, they have to be within, you know, 20 feet, 30 feet or like they have to have, you know, some sort of canned antenna like pointed right at it from across the street. And yeah. it's going to be a lot harder. And then they have to be able to hack through whatever the actual key mechanism is, because I'm guessing it's not just, if you pair with the device, you can unlock the door, like that would be kind of dumb. So it's probably, you have to send the right key codes and all of that. So it's probably, yeah. you know, it's pretty secure at a couple of different levels there. So that's nice. Um, it does remind me of something that um, was implemented uh, by uh, some of my coworkers that work for one of our projects. Um, uh, I'll say that uh, SPG uh, has made a bunch of waves recently because they've been upgrading some of their hotels to actually allow you to check in from your phone via Bluetooth. And yeah. uh, the idea is you'll be able to use Apple Watch, Android Wear, uh, any of those to do the same thing. Where yeah. You basically skip the front desk, go to your room, like it tells you what room you've got in the app. 
you go to that room, you say, yeah, I'm here, unlock the door, and it'll connect to that door and unlock it, and then you can go in. So this is a very similar device, but for your home. Yeah. Um, seems really smart. Um, I would, like, it'd almost be nice if you could set it to just auto unlock. I know that it's, it's pretty tricky to do that. Um, but yeah. if, it, if it can detect that you're on the outside of the door, it could just be automatically unlocked whenever you're close enough. So you wouldn't even need to interact with the watch at all. But um, um, it's, I'd still, it's, I'd still want that small tactile. Uh, like a little bit there. of manual choice yeah. so that it's not automatic. It, it does get tricky, I think, when you start doing things automatically. And I'll maybe talk about some of that uh, <laughs> uh, later. Coming up in a second, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty neat. I uh, 250 is not a bad price. To, no. You know, comparing to, uh, we were talking about watches, the 9300. Uh, 250 for a door lock, you know, Bluetooth LE um, with Apple Watch support, I would probably prefer to get one that was a little bit more open or at least uh, talks about having both Android wear or, you know, yeah. you know, like it'd be nice if they had support for that. Maybe they say, yeah, that's coming. I, I we haven't, or I haven't read all through how this one works, but yeah, um, like you could see that happening and uh, something that integrates with other home automation stuff would be nice so that you could key it to, okay, I've unlocked the door. Oh, you're home. Let me make sure that the thermostat's set and the lights are turned on and the music's playing and all that stuff. So um, hopefully um, they're doing some things to keep it open. Once again, I think that would then go into the whole thing with the Wi-Fi. I mean, if, if they can break in the Wi-Fi, they get into your computer. Your computer has a Bluetooth connection to your door. They can unlock your door from there. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like the separation. In, in this case, I like the separation. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be great for, you know, it turns everything on that you want on, like the the air and the lights and stuff like that. But, you know, there's a little, there's a point where, you know, you got to get, you got to say, okay, let's, let's think about the security aspect of it over the, uh, the comfortability or the uh, execution out of there. Cause I can always say, I can always tap once to unlock a door and then turn around, tap another time to turn on my lights or my, my, uh, my heater, or my air conditioning, or whatever in in the time of the situation. So, um, or, is maybe you what? could have it where your device, like so, your watch unlocks the door, and then your watch tells your phone to do all the other things, saying, "Hey, when I do this motion on the device, also go send a signal to the other stuff, so that it's oh, you're so saying it's not that something is monitoring the door and the door's not connected to anything else, but okay. your device, since you're controlling it from there, it can. It's like an IFTTT type thing. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Well, that's interesting. Uh, interesting thoughts. And, and yeah, I've, I've read a couple articles, not only just S SGP, but other, uh, I think I said that right, other other hotel chains are talking about how, you, you know, you there, there won't be a key card anymore. Um, I don't know it, whether you can go from desk to door um, without talking to someone. I think that's a big security issue. Um, I'd rather have somebody you know, go up to the front desk and say, okay, is my room ready? They say, yes. Okay, here's your checking credentials. And then I go up. So, you know, I'm not hauling dead bodies up through the back way without people knowing it, you know, things like that. There's um, definitely some secure, like they're going to have to be monitoring these people that uh, don't ever have to interact with anybody. Um, but honestly, yeah. those those front desk people, they they don't seem to be checking you real closely. Like, you know, they don't, <laughs> that's true like but once of, again you know, once again if they see a dead body then they're, they're gonna say hey what's what's that over there um uh, you know it's a dummy for uh, uh for <laughs> something it's like uh it's a mannequin uh, yeah. dressed up that's really heavy it's like well one why would you be bringing it into a hotel i guess maybe to stage the body yeah that makes sense i can yeah, see that so, yeah, yeah yeah but you wouldn't do that like you do that at night through the back entrance you wouldn't do that through the like by the front desk come yeah. on yeah Okay. Well, Come on, you've obviously again, never done this. Once before. again, it's, it's it's just that extra. St anyway, so what, what, let us know what your thoughts are on it. Do you want it? Do you need to haul dead bodies into into in the rooms at, at hotels? Um, let's you not need you to do it. The, yeah, let's let's not let's not do it. But uh, do you need to, do you need to unlock your door with your Apple Watch so you can haul a dead body into your into your house? Let us know by tweeting us over Geekazine over at Luke Luca or Jeff at WearableToday.com. Luke at wearabletoday.com or birdie at wearabletoday.com. And that brings us to the end of our segment of Big News Little Arms. 
<laughs> As I alluded to, uh, Luke, you have uh, you had a project this weekend, didn't you? Oh, it wasn't this weekend. It was it was in the middle of last week. It was much okay. less convenient than the weekend. But yes, I had a a pretty interesting project. Um, my garage door opener, so the little motor that sits at the top of the garage that opens the door when you click the button, um, decided to stop being strong enough to open the door or it just didn't want to or it thought it was hitting something or I don't know. I don't know yeah. exactly what it was, but it basically stopped working. So okay. I had to go get a new garage door opener. And long story short, the garage do door opener I got has um, some some pretty nice tech in it. So uh, it's got a very quiet motor and it's stronger and it's got a battery backup so it can run when the when the power's out. Yeah. And it has built-in Wi-Fi. Not so much so that it's an access point or anything, but it can connect to your home Wi-Fi router and for free you can control it remotely. Um, it's a Chamberlain MyQ one and a quarter horsepower motor. If anybody's looking for it, they are available on Amazon. We'll have to put a uh, link in the show we'll put notes. Put a link in the show notes, yeah. Just so that um, we can, uh, just so people, if they want to know which one it is. Um, I bought it um, at Home Depot. Uh, they have a Home Depot version of it, same model, just different packaging um, for Home Depot, but um, only a few dollars more than Amazon, and I kind of needed it right away, so I went and got yeah. it. But it's really neat because. They actually adopt some open standards uh, enough that um, you can connect. So the, the MyQ Chamberlain app lets you connect your Nest to it so you can set home or away through the, the Chamberlain app. But what's really neat, and I only I found this out over the weekend, and this is what I did play with, is the Wink app. I, we've talked about Wink before as a home automation uh, yeah. service. Um, but you can actually download the Wink app, and I was able to do it without any Wink branded products. I was able to use the app to hook up my garage door opener and my Nest thermostat and control both of them from there. You can even do some macros. So I had one that I did uh, for a while, which was, oh, I'm leaving the house. And then it will open the garage door and set the Nest to away. Um, and so that was pretty neat. And then you were able to set up custom things that you want to do, custom shortcuts that the Wink app calls them. And you can have those shortcuts available on your wrist. And so there's actually a shortcut. I took a video of this. I'll have to get this posted up uh, on YouTube or um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure exactly. How, I think I may record another version of it. Um, but uh, where I actually, you can open the garage door from your wrist. You basically open up the Wink app on your on Android Wear, on your watch, and then there's shortcuts. And then I have a shortcut for uh, open the pod bay doors is what I called it. And so you tap that and then the garage door opens nice. uh, within just a few seconds. And so that's pretty neat. Um, I was using that functionality uh, to give an example of why I think it's neat is I was out doing some yard work and what I usually do is I use a little keypad and like, so I'm going around to the front of, ha front of the house and so I don't want to leave the back, you know, I don't want to leave the garage door open in the back uh, while I'm out front for an hour because you never know, somebody might come by and take something because it's easy to do. So I close the garage door and then I come back around and I punch in the key code and garage door opens. Well, yeah. what's neat is now when I'm in the front of the yard and I'm like, well, okay, time to get, you know, go back in and take the mower around, I can basically get my phone out, hit the open the door and start pushing, you know, um, the mower around. And then while it's doing that, the door is actually opening in the back. And so I'm like, I'm kind of saving a little bit of time and, you know, it's kind of a toy. It's not super useful, yeah. but if somebody was visiting, ah, uh, there you go. Um, if somebody was like over at the house or let's say Real, um, really quick uh, on the screen, I'm, I'm showing oh, yeah, you the sure. Chamberlain MyQ. Uh, included uh, with, in the smartphone. It's not much to look at if you're listening, so don't worry about you're not missing anything, really. It's just a picture of the uh, website. So anyway, yeah. continue on, Luke. Yeah, so anyway, like there's some really practical uses for it. Let's say uh, somebody's like, oh, yeah, I need to drop something by your house. And yeah. It's like, well, I can either come home and meet you or tell you what, I can just open the garage door from work 
and you can just leave it in the garage and then like i'll just you know just text me or call me back okay I, you know it's in there yeah. okay or you know they can hit the button while they're there i guess but it's like well, actually okay. actually nowadays uh, i i i think it's uh ups has it where you can go into the ups dashboard and you put your information in uh you can actually put in like key codes oh, really? uh to get through the gate and stuff like that but yeah you can actually uh i, I don't know if you can set it up for something like this but they they basically punch in a code or something like or call you and say hey need to open your garage door so I can put this package in and then you can do that and, and close it up that works too yeah. so yeah so like there are some practical uses for it like that of of being able to do it the really nice thing or even more like more common use case is you can see whether your garage door is open or closed if you've ever had that nagging feeling of you drive away you know and then. You're like, did I close the garage door? I don't remember. Yeah. I was in such a hurry. Being able to pull out their little app or, you know, the Wink app or whatever um, and be able to see, oh, the garage door has been closed for 45 minutes. That that would indicate what it is. Um, also, it can send you alerts. The, the actual uh, Chamberlain branded app, you can set up alerts anytime the garage door opens or closes, you know, either, either one or both. And it'll mm -hmm. actually send you a little text message. So right now, I get an alert on my phone every single time that garage door opens, um, which isn't that often. So it's not real annoying, but it's kind of nice to just, you know, oh hey, so you know the garage door opened. So either yeah. somebody's arriving or somebody's leaving or or whatever. So uh, kind of handy. Um, you know, I don't okay. know how, how how I'll leave that long term, but um, really really pretty neat. We'll have, to, we'll have to check on the security of that and see if there's any holes that uh, I can automatically open up your uh, garage door or not. But maybe maybe Birdie will even have like a little wearable. So when Birdie wants to go flying around the backyard or something like that, uh, just press the button and the garage door opens and then fly around and then close the garage door or something like that. So there's Once you start automating things like that, there's a lot of different things you could do. So, um, but But it is all accessible, and I really like how the Wink app, yeah let's like integrates with that and i didn't have to do anything special i basically just logged in so i, I made a wink account and i have a basically a garage door account and a thermostat account but in the yeah. wink account you can log into all of those and then they're all accessible through wink um, even without like i said having any wink products there's no wink subscription you have to pay for so cool um, that aspect's kind of cool so yeah um and the ability that wink like, so Nest doesn't really have a watch app and uh, Chamberlain doesn't really have a watch app, but since Wink does, you get those, you know, you can set up shortcuts for, um, I've got home and away on the thermostat and open the door from my watch, basically. So, um, yeah, real, real convenient, actually. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's cool. And, uh, you know, I, you know I think, don't think about the garage door. You know, you think about the thermostat, you think about the, uh, the fire alarm and stuff like that, but you don't think about the garage door. And that's 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 pretty sweet because I even remember my best friend. We would go over to his house uh, when he moved uh, farther away from us. Um, we'd go over to his house. And I knew I knew the key code to their garage, so I could always get in that way. Um, and uh, this is this is just one level extra level step of security because then I could you know I could have other people go through the garage rather than the the front door. Um, and if I don't want them to go through, I just lock it all down in one one basic key swoop and, and go from there so mm -hmm. but well that's cool i didn't have as much fun of a weekend as you apparently so had a couple had a couple shows um I, I upgraded all the computers to windows 10 i don't know have you done your windows 10 upgrade yet i have not it is sitting on my windows machine i've gone through a lot of the steps but have not actually done the upgrade okay yeah, I, uh, I I did it on on the 29th. So far, so good. No problems. Uh, my main main machine is is purring like a kitten. My my laptop is doing pretty good. Uh, the biggest thing is anybody that has, excuse me, anybody that has a non SSD drive in their laptop. Like there's a laptop right behind me that's going to get Windows 10, and it's non SSD. It's a regular hard drive. It's going to take forever. So if you decide to upgrade to 10. You've got a regular standard hard drive in there, you know, just kind of set it and forget it during the evening, and then next morning you'll finish it up. So, um, just one of those things. Other than that, you know, I've I've had some uh, issues, uh, what they call uh, uh, baritis or something like that, uh, where my leg uh, a couple weeks ago 
uh, I kind of threw my back out and my leg went out too. So I've been uh, going through those issues, um, trying to work them out because it's it's been basically a pain to stand up and walk. And I don't wish this on anybody. It's just horrible. Last week I mowed the lawn. I was like feeling good. It's like, okay, it's time to mow the lawn because it needs it. And I got done and I was just like, what the heck did I just do? Mm-hmm. It was, it's not good. But anyway, anywho, let's move on from there. Uh, anything you want to add for this last week or no? No, uh, not too much. Uh, but yeah, starting to see how this uh, home automation wearable mashup stuff is starting to come together a little bit. Now it's, now it's uh, getting some more ideas of things to maybe add. Hopefully yeah. not... <laughs> not as expensive and as physically demanding as replacing a garage door opener, oh, yeah. which takes takes a little while and it's a lot of working over your head. You know, you gotta. Oh yeah. You're working like because you can't get above the pro. You know, above oh, the so, work because. So you did it yourself. You didn't have somebody else do it for you. Oh, I did it myself. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Yeah, never you know, done I'm, that before. So new oh, skill. It, right? Well, the old ones. I remember I, I helped people with the old ones, and the, the, these were the ones that had the sp- the uh, tension springs in there, and those things are they're dangerous if you if uh because you tie down the tension spring so it's not fully loose or something like that and if if it breaks apart it, it could the spring goes off into the distance it could knock you on the head or something like that it's it's oh, yeah. not yeah. it's not a fun job um yeah. but i'm glad they don't do those tension springs anymore that's crazy they do them they have them for the door but the opener just pulls the door up and then those springs are all being used to help counter balance yeah. it and make it so it, this little motor can lift the door but yeah oh, those cool. the, we have those uh springs on there um, right. but yeah I, luckily i didn't have to mess with any of that i would i would not mess with any of that yeah uh, i've had a spring break before and i just call somebody be like you come out and do it i am not those things can kill people like yeah yeah if they if you do it wrong so. oh oh i had a spring break too we went down to florida we partied for the week and then we came back it was awesome <laughs> anyway <laughs> Let's I'm move doing. on. Let's move on. We want to thank our uh, friends over at uh, Cashfly for the non the iTunes bandwidth, the RSS feeds. They came up, stepped up, and became a part of the show. Uh, check them out over at Cashfly.com. Two terabytes, uh, fourteen days for free. Um, use the code Geekazine, um, and it, it's not an affiliate code by any means. It's just you know so they can track. Uh, so please just use Geekazine in there and should check it out. But a uh, great way for you to. Uh, a great CDN for your audio, for your video podcasts and stuff like that over at CashFly.com. Also, WearableToday.com forward slash deals. WearableToday.com forward slash deals. WearableToday.com forward slash deals. On wearable technology, refurbished wearable technology. Um, I know they have, uh, the, I looked through some of the stuff. They have uh, uh, one of the products that we're going to talk about in this next segment. They have it in there. Um, we also have, you know, Moto 360s, your Fitbits, your Fit Bugs, your Fit Flies, your Fit whatever. They're all in there, too, at some great deals. So go over to wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. Of course, it supports the show, and we thank you very much. And then, of course, you can always go over to youtube.com forward slash thisweekinglass. I can't change. This is the thing. I need, We need to get 1,000 subscribers. I think this is how this works. Before I can change the name, it was some policy that, that Google put in, that YouTube put in. So once we get 1,000 subscribers, and I can hear you tapping your keys, Luke. So, Sorry. Uh, that's okay. If you go over to uh, if you go over to YouTube.com uh, this week in glass, uh, we get get subscribed so we can get a thousand subscribers so we can change the name to Wearable Today. Um, other than that, just uh, there's a little blue box on the on the side and it says donate. So donate uh, five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars. We'll be really happy and we thank you very much. So, all right. <clears throat> I think that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, let's get into the main focus here. And you're, I can still hear you tapping there. You got you got like a book to write or something? What's up with that? No. Okay, you're Wrong not typing? Is. Okay. Yeah, I'm done typing. I thought I heard you typing. Maybe it's your microphone. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about the focus for the day. Back to school. The kids are going back. Yay. Summertime's over in about three weeks. And there's a lot of, uh, lot of technology out there um so you can keep your kids safe of course uh so you can sit back and drink margaritas in your house while your kids are learning about math and arithmetic and 
which is pretty much the same thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because you use that later in life, they say. So I've never used math or arithmetic, which is why, it, you know, I call it two different things. So, uh, but yeah, you, history and all that other stuff. Uh, you, the, so, so basically what we're doing is uh, we're, we're going to be talking about, and we've, we've picked out, we both picked out a couple wearables that you can use, that you, you can uh, get for your kids to help out uh, with their learning their school stuff or just Facebooking, tweeting everybody and finding out what's going on, where the parties are and stuff like that. I'm going to start over on this one. Um, where is it? There we are. This is the Voltec 1010 off-grid solar backpack and a lot of, lot of great uses for uh, solar backpacks. The biggest thing, of course, is it's going to help charge those phones, those, uh, those game systems, those Bluetooth devices, those wearable devices, everything like that. And, of course, uh, it can haul all the books around. If I don't know, the kids, uh, the kids haul books around anymore, or are they all on iPads and tablets uh, with, their, with their books and stuff like that? Uh, um, yeah, you don't have I any still kids. have books. I don't have yeah. kids, so I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have kids either, so... I don't know. It's, it, I think they have books. I think they still have books. Most of the schools. I know there's some schools that are switching over to to ebooks and yeah. That. But 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 you got other things. I mean, I was uh, in high school. We were talking about this, and I was I was kind of thinking back because my 25 year reunion is actually in two weeks. So and I was thinking back of what I did in high school, and I said because we were talking at the beginning, and I said, well, Luke, I. Uh, uh, on Mondays, I would get there at like seven o'clock in the morning, and I would not leave until ten o'clock at night. I wouldn't be done till ten o'clock at night, um, because of all extracurricular activities. Um, jazz band happened during the evening, and uh, and and I was in a couple other clubs. Newspaper uh, was also on Monday, and then Luke goes, "Well, at least uh, at least things calm down." It's like, yeah, every Monday I start at seven o'clock in the morning, and uh, well, I end at ten o'clock at night. So. I guess 25 years later, things haven't changed too much for me here. Um, so, but the, anyway, uh, the whole idea of the backpack is, you know, during the day, you got to charge up. So you want to have that solar, because uh, a lot of times, especially after school, kids are not inside the school. They're outside the school just hanging out, like I said, checking Facebook and, and stuff like that. Or they could put the backpack next to a window and get a little solar charge from there. They have several different types of these solar backpacks. Uh, this one, I believe, is $169. Uh, my contact's a little bit blurry, so everything's blurry on the screen right now. <laughs> so, um, But a uh, great way for uh, for people to, to charge up their devices and go from there, especially college students. What are your thoughts on the backpack there, Luke? I like it. I think it's a, it's a really nice um, you know, charging system. Uh, it'd be good for... Yeah, good for kids, especially if they're if they're using that. It's probably more. I see it as more like high school or or college age. But yeah. I'm sure it'll it'll trickle down into a lot of the younger groups as they get more of that. You know, oh yeah, they've got to have an iPad and it's got to be able to last all day or something. And yeah. so they'll um, they'll need either some big battery pack or something like this to help charge or both. Um, yeah. Hey, they can charge up during lunch a little bit, and or yeah. if you can at least. Have it charged so that you can charge up during the day, you know, and then you can leave it out in the sun and it'll it'll charge up, you know. Yeah, you can go from there. Time since... Well, I, I see, you know, like uh, the big thing is, is being a musician, uh, going through high school as a musician. Um, uh, if I would have had the iPad 25 years ago, I would have stored all of my music on the iPad because it, it, it just makes the most sense. So mm -hmm. being able to have an external source, excuse me, have an external source there uh, to, to uh, be able, you know, come 4 o'clock, all the batteries are going to be down to nothing. And if you've got extracurricular jazz band or something like that, you want to make sure that your iPad has enough charge so you can read your chart music. Otherwise, you don't know the notes. It just doesn't work. So, Are they going to have little plugs on all the on all the little stands, all the music oh, yeah. stands in there so that, that everybody can plug their, their stuff. I'm in. really surprised. I, I thought, I, I was thinking somebody would eventually come out with a music stand with, an, uh, with a USB port on it, but it hasn't happened yet, at least nothing that I've seen. And if I see it, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But uh, so far, you know, my, my music stand is just a regular music stand. 
And I just use a, a lightning cable, a long lightning cable. I got one from Griffin, one of the reversible USB ones. Mm -hmm. So you can't go, oh, that doesn't work that way. Oh, it doesn't work that way. Oh, yeah, no, it works. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's just, it just works no matter what. So anyway, so Luke, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your first product right there? You're talking about the tile tracker? That yes. is correct. So this one I like because... It helps you find things. And what I remember as a kid is, and as an adult, uh, is you constantly misplace things. Uh, unless you have a really good place to keep them all the time and kids don't, um, you're always gonna be looking for stuff. So yeah. I've seen ads for several different products like this. So this is just one example. This is not like the only one you could get, but um, this, is a, this is a tile, which is a little, I believe it's a Bluetooth beacon of some sort that you basically attach to whatever the product, you know, whatever it is you want to track, and then you can track that beacon. Thus, you can find whatever it's attached to. So yeah. for me, something like this for all your kids' backpacks would make a lot of sense. Um, maybe you hide it or sew it in somewhere so they can't take it off, or you put it in, you know, down in the backpack so it doesn't just pop off uh, on the outside. But um, I think it's really something that a lot of parents would get a benefit from because it's like, you know, okay, kids, time to go. And they're like, I can't find my bag. And you're like, oh, no. And so you're like tearing the house apart, you know. Oh, let's check under the couch. Oh, where'd you do? Oh, you're watching TV. Maybe it's in there. Oh, it's, it's in your room. Oh, your room's a mess. Or how are we going to find anything? Did you put it in your yeah. closet? Is it under your bed? Is it under your covers? Is it, you know, and it's like, okay, pull out this thing okay, it's in your room somewhere. Let's tear this place apart. And you just, you know, at least you know where to start um, within a little bit of a range of like, okay, we know you're within a few feet of it. Okay, you're looking around. Okay, it's got to be right around here somewhere. Yeah. Um, so something like that I could see as being very handy. Yeah. As we we're seeing in some of these pictures, uh, you can actually put it into your suitcase and stuff like that. And I think what it does is it, it sends back and forth so you'll know the last known location between your the device and the tile so but i'm not 100 percent sure on that so like the last uh, location maybe it saw it because it could do that it could say well yeah. last time your phone saw it it was yeah your phone was here so we know it's probably in that area yeah and then when you get yeah. close maybe it's a beacon that helps you you know pinpoint exactly where it is yeah and of course that is uh over at uh, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals you can get yourself a tile at a discounted price. So I would suggest that if you really want to try it. And then if you like it, then you can go and get uh, get more tiles and go from there. Because the idea is to get tiles on everything and then have your phone. You just scroll through your phone, what you have, whatever you want. So, But if you had this next product, you wouldn't have to worry about where it is because it's in your jacket. And that's uh, our friends over at Scotty Vest, uh, Scott Jordan. Um, they have uh, they have some really cool vests. We talked about one a couple weeks ago, the newer one that, that they have on the Kickstarter. Uh, this is the Scotty Vest Men's RFID Travel Vest. This has a RFID blocker in it, so it, uh, it the pocket will block any type of signal, so nobody tries to steal your information from your ID, your information from your passport that do have RFID trackers in nowadays. So um, you can uh, you can be a little bit safe and comfortable. Of course, all, all these uh, pockets that are in here have wrap-around wire ports, so you can wrap wires you, and, and around. So you can have your phone in your in your left pocket, and uh, you have your phone in your left pocket, and then it strings up so your headphones are you, are at an easy place, so you can put them in. Um, I've seen podcasters take a, a Zoom H4n and put it in one pocket, wrap the microphone cord around them and then pull it out the other pocket so they can do interviews like that. That works pretty well. Um, many You can do other wearable technology. Um, i got to ask Scott if he can do a GoPro pocket. That would be kind of cool in looking at that. So, um, But it's a pretty cool uh, travel vest. Uh, Marco's actually getting a Scotty vest, and he's going to be doing a review on wearable today about it in the upcoming weeks. I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not, but I said it, so it's all said. So, Marco, Ooh. you better get that vest now. Breaking news. Uh, Breaking bad yeah. news. For all the people so. that listen, they get inside information. There you go. Yeah, there you go. pretty cool. 
All right, next up. Next up, I want to talk about the Paxi. Uh, so there are, again, a few of these kinds of devices, um, but this is just one representative one. So this would be the activity and um, really location tracker uh, for your for your kids. Um, you know, it's it's a bigger deal today. You know, everybody wants to know where their kids are and keep track of them. Um, this one's actually pretty neat because it has not only GPS tracking uh, and location tagging, um, but it can do things like tell you the ambient temperature, like, huh, my kid's out, you know, like it's really hot outside. How long have they been outside? That kind of thing. Heart rate, so you can find out if they're, you know, how hard they're pushing themselves, that kind of stuff. Um, it even has some, some you know, big brotherish things, which um, I don't mean big brother in the family sense. I mean it in more of the, you know, or well in sense of yeah. like, uh, but it has like band removal alert. So if they try to take it off, it'll actually let you know, hey, they took this off, which, you know, maybe it's just they've been outside and it's hot and they're getting, you know, it's all sweaty and they're just like trying to take it off to, to wipe the sweat off. You know, I don't know. Um, but it, so it's a interesting uh, uh, child tracker, um, especially for kids that maybe aren't, uh, you know, that are pretty young and you're just wanting to, you know, like, Hey, they're in, they're in kindergarten or, you know, something like that, where you're like, I'm not really sure if they would be brave enough to speak up if they're, you know, if they're in trouble or, uh, you know, if they need help or if they're, um, you know, they, they might just not be really willing to, to, uh, to say something or, or whatever, um, yeah. or, you know, they're, they're really small and, you know, if, if somebody, uh, wanted to whatever, you know, yeah. uh, if somebody, you know, if they were getting into trouble or whatever, it's like, you can kind of tell where they are. Um, so I, the, I think it opens up a, a lot of discussion about like, you know, what, you know, how far should parents go and there's all that kind of stuff. But you know, I could definitely understand why why parents might might be wanting to have something like this for their their kids. Um, you know, maybe it's something after a while you just you don't worry about it. But um, well, there's a lot of like it's scary. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm sure to send your kid off to school and just be like, okay, I used to be around them all the time. I knew I could know exactly where they were. Now I'm just very very unsure. And so something like this that gives you that peace of mind. Um, well, there's there's some other things I'm, I'm looking at this, and, and I, I see some other things that that could be very useful for a parent, um, and that is uh, well, one one thing is you know you talk about the heart heart uh, monitor um, to find out if the kids' heart rates are going up um, and temperatures going up and going down. I remember when I was in school, I remember times where we would go into classrooms and they'd be frigid cold or super hot. Um, and then there's other times where, you know, you get, you get in a situation where you have a teacher that, you know, you just really, uh, I don't want to say scared, but uh, you, you, you get, uh, you get nervous around them or, or you, you're, you know, you're, you're not feeling their style or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and all this stuff could be actually tracked. I could actually see, I had a parent teacher conference, the parents go, well, you know, we, we put this Paxi on, on our, on junior here and the, Every time at three o'clock, his heart rate goes up, and his hands get all clammy or, or something like that. Um, and what what happens every day at three o'clock? And the teacher goes, "Oh, we have social studies or math or something like that." And it's like, okay, well, maybe maybe my child gets really anxious about uh, math, and maybe we've got to uh, deal with that. Or or they go, "Well, we have the." the substitute teacher come in or TA come in or something like that and teach uh -huh. for an hour. And, and if they're not really, I don't want to say that, that the, T, the TA scares them or anything like that, but um, if they are not, if they're nervous around that TA, maybe they're not learning better and, and yeah. uh, they can actually learn through patterns is my yeah. whole point. It'd and uh, to, 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 yeah. to look at things like that, or it's like, Oh, that's a uh, recess. We, we go outside like, Oh, well, that makes sense. It got up to, you know, it's 90 degrees and their heart rate goes up. Yeah, they're outside playing. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, now I, I know. And then it's like, huh, one day it was 90 degrees 
or like it was that time and they didn't go outside and their heart rate didn't go up and the kid said no no we had recess everything's fine and you're like huh maybe i need to ask around i'm like oh they got in trouble they were yeah they got detention yeah yeah they they had to like they had to (laughs) sit out and you're like oh okay so it's like yeah it's a little it, you know, it's it's maybe a little Orwellian, but you know, it's it's <laughs> it's something that you know we can do now. And yeah, 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 I can I can definitely understand how some parents might might want to have or just you know have that insight into it. Yeah, we're we're taking it to an extreme. So oh yeah, it's, yeah. it's not are, gonna yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. This is not so, this is not what we expect everyone to do. And like, we're not saying everyone should go buy one of these and track your children. But it's like there are you know there are probably use cases and. There's probably even better use cases once you get into uh, children with learning disabilities or physical oh, yeah. disabilities where they really, they just can't communicate quite as well or, you know, you just want to keep a better eye on them because you're like, well, I know yeah. I'm kind of entrusting them to the school system at this point. And, and, and that's another good, that's another good aspect. If, if I don't know if Paxi does this, but this would be a, a really cool, if, if the teacher and the parents have a trust or the school and the parents have a trust, um, you get a you get a device like this that actually is monitored not just by the parents but also by the school. So let's say, uh, you, well, you wouldn't have to take attendance because the attendance will tell you all the kids are there. If Junior's not there, the teacher can go, well, Junior, Junior left for school today, but Junior's not here right now. So either Junior's playing hooky or there's something wrong, and let's go find out where Junior is. And then yeah. the school the school itself could actually do that. And, and maybe not as much public schools, but definitely private schools could could do this for monitoring safety. Uh, so not only do they make sure that Junior doesn't skip class, but they also make sure Junior didn't get into a, a, a carpeted van or anything like that. So yeah. um, I could see it back and forth. I think this this would be a great one. Um, not as much for the colors because you know any 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 kid above. Six or seven would probably not want to wear that bracelet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a, that's a pretty colorful bla- bracelet. But if, you, if you're like six, five, six or seven, that's an awesome bracelet. Uh, that's just awesome. So, um, but uh, pretty cool stuff. And I, you, you could see where this could actually lead. Not, not monitoring everything. Not being you know super strict because you know a kid's got to skip a class every now and then. I'm just saying. Um, but definitely. Being in the know is very important, especially when you're talking about a kid that's around the age five to uh, five to ten, or maybe twelve or something like that. Um, where you know sometimes you know how many fi- how many six year olds skip class? It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but you know if they come back from recess and they're not there, then you start to worry. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anywho, th- there's a lot of cool stuff, and, and we were going through. So if you've got some cool tech for school, we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, the weeks up upcoming. Uh, probably make a, a segment called Back to School, and uh, for the next few weeks, we'll talk about some cool back to school tech. So if you see anything out there on the interwebs, let us know. Uh, Jeff at wearabletoday.com, Luke at wearabletoday.com, and go from there. All right, well, that does it for this show. We went a little bit over, but once again, we had some great information jam-packed into the show. Uh, Luke, thank you very much for coming to the show. Of course, every single week, we want to tell everybody who you are, what you do. So my name is Luke Wallace. I like warm hugs. Uh, my Twitter handle is Luke Luca. You can see it down here. Or you can email me, Luke, at wearabletoday.com. Or you can email Birdie at wearabletoday.com. She just kind of hangs out with us every week, every single week, just hanging out. She's kind of my wearable. Uh, I don't know if that's right or not. Um, anyway, yeah, you can find me on Google Plus, google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. If there is such a thing as Google Plus anymore. Oh, is that too soon? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, I, yeah. I accept warm hugs, cold hugs, every type of hugs, even spiky hugs. I don't know. There's something about a spiky hug that's really, really nice. But anyway, mm-hmm. you can find me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek, geekazine at gmail.com. And we will go from there. Since I didn't play the music at the opening, I'm going to play the music now. Thank you guys very much for coming to the show. This is Wearable Today. Uh, we Every single uh, Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern, we start the show so you can join with us. Um, and, of course, it's there on audio and on video. Uh, support the show over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. And then thanks to our off, off-site RRSS iTunes uh, uh, supplier, Cashfly. 
go over to catchfly.com to check out for two terabytes for free a 14 day free trial over there so thanks a lot for watching thanks a lot for listening we will see you next time this has been and still is and will always be this week in google google glass also known as wearable today you guys have a great evening and take care